and welcome back to Rotten Rambling On. Hopefully, we actually got our sound problem solved. <laughs> yep. Can you hear us, folks? I mean, if not, we'll never know. You sound pretty clear now. Okay, good. Uh, again, you know, uh, just establishing, we had some technical errors for uh, episode 10 there, which is kind of bad because uh, I, I thought we had a lot of good material there. It was pretty good. In fact, if you couldn't hear Jake, that's when he was being his funniest. That kind of pissed me off, yeah. too. It was like, oh, I had good momentum going. There were some jokes. Oh, but that reminds me, before mm. we get any further to complaining about the sound, uh, this program is for adults, uh, so if uh, you're offended by adult language or adult topics, it might be the right time adult to situations. turn Adult situations. Yes, yeah, so if you're under the age of 18, probably shouldn't be listening to this without headphones so your folks can't catch you. And, and then, uh, I'm digging us a hole again, aren't I? Yeah, Sorry. also NSW, so... Yeah, definitely not safe for work. Your boss catches you hearing this. I I can't tell you what'll happen. Pink slip? probably applaud you because, you know, it's pretty... Oh, your style and taste. Yeah. Well done. Go All right, fun. anyway, enough of, uh, enough patting our own backs or beating our own dicks. <sighs> so... You beat your own. I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm not getting paid for that. It's like a Dutch rudder, Jake. There's nothing gay about it. <laughs> Your own hand. Oh, come in your mouth. It's not gay. It's because I was thinking of other things. <laughs> All right. Anyway, none of this has to do with our topic today, folks. Oh, it wasn't uh, implied gay material? Oh. All right. Fair enough. You know, I mean, the guy that played Bob, I, yeah, did, I little did iffy. actually question his sexuality in quite iffy. a few episodes. And yes, that's a lead in. Uh, Bob being one of the primary characters of one of our favorite. Uh, novel series, mm. uh, as well as television series, and influenced by a lot of other uh, great shows. And, as well uh, as decent novelists, novels too. Novels that we love is Dresden Files, folks, a uh, product of the brilliant Jim Butcher. Yes, now, uh, to give you a quick insight, uh, Jim Butcher basically established that in 96 he wrote his first novel as a semester. This, of course, is after attempting five separate novels prior that he informed us were all crap. <laughs> but because of that writing experience, it just became more of a factor of he was able to do this with style versus innate talent. Because mm-hmm. not everyone can just write a novel off the top of their head. If so, we would have a lot more libraries stocked. Yeah, that is true. God only knows what will happen with my book. You know? It is. Yeah, it's a great toilet It stuff. is an art, and it does take a certain uh, amount of talent be a great writer, but it also takes work. Yeah, it takes a Hard lot of time, work. discipline. Mm-hmm. You cannot just idly blow it off. No, you can't just knock out a great novel, and we give huge props to and every published novelist out there. I mean, you may think that you write a great novel, but it's the same thing that people say about great armchair musician athletes artwork. versus professional athletes. Mm. You know, the worst baseball player in the world still has an RBA or an RBI. Exactly. Well, they thought, yeah, this guy sucks. I'm like, yeah, but you're not in the show. Yeah. You're watching the show. Yeah. You don't get to say dick. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, I mean, you will, but. Yeah. Uh, the biggest factor in this establishing is that uh, the unfortunate demise of a first season show. Now, this was released from Sci Fi Pictures mm-hmm. and was shot up in Toronto or fake uh, Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, Toronto gets used a lot, folks. Just just accept that Canada is a really great, inexpensive place to shoot. You don't believe me? Go watch every Stargate, Stargate Atlantis, uh, Andromeda, all three of these shows, not to mention a flock of seagulls worth more, mm-hmm. have all been shot up somewhere around Canada. Oh, yeah. No, it's a, it's a great place. And we get some great actors from our brothers and sisters up in Canada. What? We really do. I... Shatner? Yeah, oh, William right. Shatner. Right, yeah. He's a triple threat, you know. Acting, singing. Oh, no, no, quadruple when you think about it. Uh, acting, singing, director, director, producer. Oh, no, no, that's five threats, actually, oh. as well as writer. And isn't he a model? Wasn't he a model at some point? Well, there, there was those unfortunate nudes, but oh, yeah. I was told not to talk to him about that. <laughs> anyway, His agent was very clear last yeah, time. Yeah, I imagine. Okay. But yes, no, produced uh, back in 2007, I believe, is when the premiere aired. Mm, that would be correct, sir. Sure. What is the best way to describe him, for the folks that don't know? Dresden? Uh, yeah. Uh, Harry Dresden? Yeah, would you, uh, in my opinion, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's Philip Marlowe with fireballs. Yeah. 
I mean, you have that same hard hitting, uh, uh, dark backstory arc of the, the, the hardened gumshoe that just happens to also be a spell slinger. It is, uh, well, I mean, if you look at the books, it's, uh, it's contemporary, what, fantasy? Yeah. Fantasy mystery? It's, it's hard boiled meets uh, paranormal mystery mm-hmm. uh, sci fi fantasy. Which to to set a uh, to set a timeline here, the Dresden Files TV series starts in two, January two thousand and seven. Mm. The very first Dresden Files book, uh, written by uh, Jim Butcher, came out in two thousand. So seven years difference between the mm. point where he wrote his first novel and when it became popular enough to be picked up by sci-fi channel oh, IE what's, NBC. what's so funny is it took him forever just to get published because he actually went out and sought his agent oh yeah and through her found his definite and, and continuous agent yeah he and his, both he and his wife were through this woman and yeah she's she's got the goods otherwise you know you wouldn't have 12 fucking books for that basis <laughs> not to mention his Alex Fury or his Alexis Fury series uh, I think she writes two different series too his wife does yeah it and there's some similarity. Mm-hmm. You can also see where uh, a lot of these paranormal mystery writers mm-hmm. do tend to adhere to the Joss Whedon MacGuffin standing of oh. pop culture minutia. Yeah. And that's fine because, you know, honestly, that is our mindset of this modern era. Yeah, that's true. We're going to keep referencing that because, God forbid, we talk about, you know, being past ten to literature. Oh, yeah. Faulkner, fuck that. Well, and didn't he, uh, didn't he actually get help? In first getting published, didn't he have a mentor or a oh, yeah. hero? That it's it's kind of bizarre because uh, Laurel K. Hamilton, who, who wrote right. the Anita Blake series, yeah. uh, because their work is very similar on the same aspect that they were dealing with the same kind of paranormal, supernatural creatures, mm-hmm. he figured this was kind of a shoe in so he went through uh, her agent, uh, oh God, it's uh, Nikia? Nikia? Manhart. Manhart. Man- Meinhardt. Meinhardt. Yeah. Meinhardt, yeah. Man- Meinhardt? Uh, we're totally butchering this woman's name. <laughs> At any rate, a very phenomenal editor, and she has an eye for talent. Mm-hmm. But uh, the, the funniest aspect is he tried applying two months prior with her. Yeah. Rejected outright. Mm-hmm. He goes to a convention, strikes up a conversation with both her and Laurel. Yeah. Laurel, out of the blue, just goes, hey, you know what? Come on. I enjoy you. Come on. We're, we're all going to lunch. Yeah. Just drags this guy along with her. <laughs> and halfway through this, yeah, Rika wanted to pick him up. It's like, well, why weren't you interested before? You, you rejected me like two months ago. She goes, yeah, well, that was before I met you. It was just a simple factor. I got the vibe yeah. of who you are. Mm-hmm. Clearly, your writing style is going to be as off-wall and off-beat as you are. So, let's give that a whirl. And the rest, they say, is history. Ah, uh, the meat cute. Uh, but the amusing aspect is be between the development team, between screenwriter Hans Bilmer from... Oh, jeez. Uh, Star Trek Next Generation, Deep yeah. Space Nine, Tech War, and River World. Yeah, he's worked with everybody with this. And producer, screenwriter Robert Hewitt, Wolf, who did Future Sport, Deep Space Nine, uh, the Dead Zone miniseries, mm-hmm. Andromeda, and uh, the miniseries Scarlet. Yeah. He, uh, they both just basically crafted what already existed with Butcher. Yeah. And it established that a modern-day wizard does not wear a pointy hat. <laughs> a modern-day wizard does not have a long, flowing beard that looks particularly unkempt. But and was... doesn't have what you would consider a traditional keep yeah. or tower. No, in fact, he's got a basement, actually. No, well, in, in the series, you see him more predominantly in what's supposed to be his building, you yeah. know, where he operates out of. I'm like, do you have an apartment upstairs? What, what do you, what's yeah. going on with this? Do you not separate your work from living place? Of course, well, in that case, it would give him a better threshold. Yeah. They have I less mean, crazy crap coming into his office. That's true. But, I mean, you know, really, when you're a small business owner and you're in a purely uh, out, you know, out of the office mm. service industry, like yeah. being a private That's a lot. That's some serious outsourcing. You might as well save money by living and working out of the same space. It makes sense. But let's not forget, it wasn't just Robert Hewitt Wolf. Interesting little tidbit. Hmm. Nicholas Cage also helped oh, God, executive that's right. produce that TV series. Uh, that is so bizarre. And you're going, well, I could see how he'd be fascinated. Oh, yeah, but it's right up Nicholas Cage. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, crazy the, Alan. The guy is uh, the well, one of the biggest comic book sci-fi nerds I've ever encountered. Oh, I'm yeah. going, and yet you're so 
predominant in the mainstream film. And how is it you butchered Ghost Rider and Ghost Rider 2 again? <laughs> oh, 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 that's right. Which Mustn't proved, be better. Which proves, just as many fan films out there prove, no offense to oh, the listeners, yeah. uh, since you're probably the people that make them, uh, <laughs> you can love something and still fuck it in the ass mm. hard. Oh, so you did enjoy my lit erotica. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Well, I do like Laurel K. Hamilton. Well, so. was it disturbing that he kept shifting in and out of Ghost Rider between, you know, mid-coitus? Oh, oh. Flaming that, cum! That, that gives new meaning to the word <laughs> being bone. <laughs> All right, so enough of those bad Buckets of cum. <laughs> but yeah, um, well, with that same standing, what, what I thought was so hilarious is, uh, first off, uh, the gentleman in question they get to portray our main character is native of our native shore. You have failed this podcast. It is British descent, Paul Blackstone, oh, of yeah. the more predominantly known for current mainstream folks, Detective, or currently Captain Lance, mm. of Arrow. Yes, folks, that is actually an English actor who can stunt his accent so well that if you listen to him in a regular interview, you're going, wait, but I thought he was from Chicago. Who's that? When did, when did Doctor Who land on the set? Because I know! Honestly, is not the guy I was just watching, but yeah, he does it. He does a great, uh, but you have to understand sound, American accent. But you have to understand this guy has been working from, and um, uh, uh, honestly, Dresden did a lot of things for him. But he had uh, the Truth Game, yeah, uh, Presidential, uh, ER, Deadwood, Big Shots. All oh, these right. he became probably yeah. I know yeah. it's so bizarre because you probably focus mostly on my God, is Power Boost still acting? <laughs> oh shit, he is. Yeah. Okay, cool. But, uh, yeah, entrusting the city's money with this supernatural sleuth, if you will, mm -hmm. is, uh, of course, the one of the most predominant characters in the series is Lieutenant Murphy. Yeah. Uh, instead of going with the atypical teeny blonde that she is portrayed in the books, mm -hmm. they went with a woman who was, mm, what, what, about five foot eight? No, I don't think she's quite that tall. Oh, she's still... uh, Valerie Cruz isn't really tall, but she, she does have a little bit of height to yeah, her. Yeah, that's true. Well, because, it, yeah. doesn't, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't help uh, gauging her height that she's standing next to uh, Paul Blackthorne. Yeah, he is kind of dwarfing her. Yeah. There's a tall, lanky man. Oh, yeah, I know. I think that's so hilarious. You, you should see him next to Stephen Ermel when, when they're doing Arrow you know, presentations oh, yeah. or whatnot. He's still kind of <laughs> towering over him. It's funny. Yes, all you nerds out there that are built like me and Jake, Paul Blackthorne is the proof that, yes, you too, tall and He's lanky as us. you may be, can be hot. He's don't give one up of us. the tree, folks. Well, yeah, that's how you can say that about John Cusack. And, uh, no, I don't say that about John Cusack. Oh, okay. No. Well, just can't get over Gross Point Blank yet, huh? <laughs> Gross Point Blank was redeeming. Uh, I still can't get over his uh, romance film from the... Really? Uh, must, must, well, must Love Dogs? No, still say anything. That? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't care how many uh, kickboxing scenes they had with him. He still was not cool. That was a weird character. <laughs> it was a weird character. When, when you, when predominantly most of your yeah. gig is knowing kickboxing and stalking a girl you barely know. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a little fucked up. Oh no, there's that adult language again. <laughs> oh, the nice thing about being on a podcast, the FCC can't do shit. <laughs> but yeah, no, the, um, actually the Dresden TV, uh, Series, sadly, did not last more than one season. Yes, uh, but that was 14 episodes, I believe, or was that actually the 22? I don't remember now. Actually, as far as the uh, as far as the Dresden TV series, it went 12 episodes. Ah, ouch. Yeah. Oh, you know that Before, hurts. Or it actually, uh, rumor has it, died the death of uh, contract negotiations. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Paul Blackthorne could not get his contract renewed in time to uh, continue the series and had to go look for work elsewhere. Excuse me. And as such, uh, when they finally did get back to him about confirming a second season of Dresden, he had already uh, committed himself to other uh, Yeah, he already had other, other obligations. Yeah. You know what's actually funny is uh, I absolutely love the uh, the gentleman playing uh, uh, Rathbert of Bainbridge, or Bob. Oh, yeah. As in this version, unlike the uh, novel, Bob is a spirit of intellect mm -hmm. who also happens to double as a horn dog. <laughs> My God, that boy will not stop talking about sex. You have to understand, this creature mm -hmm. is a spirit that has an accumulation of knowledge that ranks well past over 700 years. Oh, yeah. And he's worked with 
some really questionable characters. <laughs> From warlocks to necromancers to this schwab who can't put two fucking nickels together in his pocket. Because, gee, ingredients apparently are costly. Replacing stabs, yeah. replacing wands, they're also costly. Or maybe he grips his rod. Yes. Every time I read that, I couldn't help but snicker. Yeah. Now, uh, an interesting side note, mm -hmm. uh, when we're talking about the, the series itself, James Marsters was actually approached because he did the audiobooks and yeah. had already kind of established himself playing Harry. Yeah. And he just simply could not see leaving California to go to, to, to Toronto on what seemed you know, kind of iffy at best. Yeah. He was actually asked to relocate, man. Yeah. The that, man was embedded well, in Los Angeles. Yeah, well, let's face it. I mean, he's got he's got uh, a life there. He's got his band there. His kids are there. Yeah. Yeah, he's actually much older than he appears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <he is. laughs> Which, for any of you uh, people that are breathing and panting over Spike, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. He's actually in his 50s. It's all Which right. Is it actually, though, but going back to Bob, it is an interesting point uh, that you talk about in the, the spirit of intellect, because that's one of the deviations yeah. that people complain about. Yeah, they about, really about established the that series. he was an existing sorcerer yeah. that had mm, gone into necromancy. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but was actually to be able to reanimate soul and body. Mm -hmm. And that's why he got punished. So now he's a, a trap spirit in his own skull, yeah. which are covered with glyphs and, and uh, I, I, I guess, wards or yeah. protective standings of that. He just simply could not be allowed to transcend on to the next life. Yeah, he was trapped in his own skull, as he repeatedly mentions in the TV yes, series. Yes, quite, quite very naughtily, uh, yeah. very snotty. <laughs> First, the funniest yeah, aspect... Man did a great portrayal of The that funniest aspect is, I'm for the life of me, he was killing me, going, I know this guy, where have I seen him? Mm -hmm. And then it dawns on me, critters. Yeah. Not one, not two, but all fucking four of them. <laughs> oh, my God. How this man had a career after that, I don't even know. But, by God, he pulled it off. I mean, Red Hook... Uh, doing vocal uh, uh, voice work for Gargoyles, uh, that that very twisted film, The Equalizer. Oh, but I'm now, just sitting here. now he actually, and folks, just a uh, just a recommendation. If you don't have Netflix, you may want to get it. An update. Uh, Terrence Mann actually has finally got himself a new decent series, playing the primary villain of Sense Eight. Uh, Netflix, That's right. a Netflix original about psychics. Uh, well, as original as it's going to be. Oh, yeah. That's actually, <laughs> I've actually uh, gone through the two. I wouldn't say it's uh, I wouldn't say it's on par with Daredevil, but it's still actually very Dare well written. Uh, it's okay. And you can just admit your weird ho latent homoeroticism for Car Charlie Cox. Oh, don't even get me started on homoeroticism when it comes to Sense8 and the, uh, the <laughs> eight-way psychic uh, sex orgy. That yeah. You know, when any two characters engage in sex and you've got seven other people that are linked to you psychically across the world. And getting pulled into your uh, madcap anyway, sexual orgy. I'm sorry, there's no way to accurately describe it. You have to watch the show, folks. <laughs> uh, Terrence Mann deserves your uh, deserves your support because really he is a great actor. It is actually a, a really show. good series. So check him out as Mr. Whispers on Sense8. That's the end of my plug there. Oh, thank you for that shameless plug that doesn't <laughs> pay for us at all. Yeah. Well, uh, okay. Uh, well, another biggest issue that people had, but again, translating from novel to. Uh -huh. Novelization via TV adaption. Yeah, is nobody wants to seem to accept that. Yeah, it takes a while. Of, it, it it takes you at least the minimum of nine months to a year to crank out a book, yeah. if you're not that experienced with mm -hmm. it. Now, if you're Stephen King, apparently you just fart and boom, you got a bestseller. That's but true. that also took him many a flatulence in order to come across or making James, those little or books. James Oh, good God, right? That, on the no, you know what? No, that man blinks. Boom. There's two bestsellers <laughs> for the year. Yeah. It's fucking obscene. Yeah. But, oh, uh, no, one of the biggest attractions from the series yeah. was, oddly enough, uh, Morgan from the, the White Council. Oh, yeah. A lot of people had an issue. And, again, I thought this actor was brilliant. He just happens to be black. Yeah, we're going to use that because that's how fucking stupid I thought it was. That was their biggest complaint because he didn't look like this bedraggled Sean Connery. Oh, yeah. We're talking about, Meanwhile, of course, uh, the character Conrad Coates. Yes, the right? actor Karen, uh, Conrad Coates from Smallville. I mean, oh, Kyle, yeah, that's right. Uh, Kyle XY, Reaper, Skyrunners. Hell, he was in Percy uh, Jackson, the Olympians for uh, the, the Lightning Thief. That's right. Yeah. He was. I so, forgot about uh, that. Uh, Tron Legacy. Uh, so this guy that. already has a pretty substantial background. Yeah. And could easily mimic the voice range that they want. 
He didn't come off overly intellectual, but he came off with a certain level of charisma. Yeah. He came off with a certain level of diligence to duty. Mm-hmm. And him brandishing that fucking broadsword about made me want to <laughs> wet down my leg. Yeah. Because it was all just one fluid motion. You're going, oh, there's somebody who was practicing on set. <laughs> I know, I you know, that thing was just flipping around, catching it. I think it was more of a long sword than a broadsword, honestly. Oh, well, you know, you could go either way. I guess I'm, I'm not really going to nitpick the size of the sword. You but. could if you really felt the need to. Yeah. The fact that we're nitpicking over <laughs> the man's skin color and the fact that he lacked a beard. I go, honestly, I like to well kempt Morgan. Yeah. I love the fact that he's wearing a nice suit. Mm-hmm. It looks pressed. He's clean shaven, short hair, has an air of authority about yeah. him, and not giving Dresden a fucking inch. Which. Is exactly it's the, really the basis of the character. Yeah, exactly. And he was one of the most uh, uh, reoccurring characters of that mm-hmm. series. Yeah. And, of course, in the books as well. Yes. I mean, yeah, Morgan had made many portrayals of that. So, honestly, I don't understand what the problem was. And, to be perfectly honest, now, admittedly, while Terrence Mann had portrayed this very capable cultured and sophisticated being Mm -hmm. which you have to find is a tad ironic because given the basis he died over 1400 years ago I think they were so worried about the Black Death yeah yeah and killing cats these are clearly the works of the devil though in all honesty I'm not going to say that I'm terribly upset that it died after one year because let's be honest it Mm. had the potential for them to really fuck up the character. Oh, easily. As they would have. Well, look because, at Because, I mean, let's look at the book series. Mm. Let's go back to the books uh, oh, for a minute there. shall we? Uh, Stormfront, great. Fool's Moon, mm-hmm. great. You start to get into book number nine with White Knight, and then later in uh, book mm. 11 in Turncoat. Yeah. And the character really changes. Well, you have to evolve. Well, you do have that's to. That's the evolve. basis. Uh, uh, that's another big complaint for the no- uh, for for the fans of the novels mm-hmm. is that he's changed radically. And I'm going, no, it's actually evolution. See, he initially was the underdog. Yeah. But the underdog cannot win every time because that wouldn't make him the underdog. It's supposed to be a rare, near freakish occurrence. Yeah, exactly. But you have five major books, just the first five books of him just kicking ass and taking names, yeah. and still coming away with it relatively unscathed. That's a little unrealistic, well, even in dealing with a paranormal mystery. Honestly, you can say the first five books between Stormfront and Death Map, they're really actually all just him getting up onto his feet. I mean, yeah. Stormfront starts with him essentially being down and out. He's barely in the Wizard's Council at Oh, all. God, he's barely scraping by because he's the youngest thing there, Yeah, and aside from the disciples. And he's newly under the... Uh, the taboo, no, not the taboo, what's the word I'm looking for? Mm. The stigma. The stigma of his past. Well, yeah, this is establishing the a character. His uncle. Yeah, so you're establishing a character, and yeah. again, he was his mentor in the books, mm-hmm. where his uncle in the... And I thought that was actually a decent twist, that there was a bloodline thing that oh, yeah. to that. It was actually kind of a nice twist for the TV mm-hmm. series. Uh, but the biggest aspect is he was still living under the stigma that he did it as a teenager in mm-hmm. the books... But he was probably, what, maybe in his 20s when it occurred in oh, the TV the series. TV series yeah. So, yeah, you've still got a guy and, who's barely in his 30s. And let's be fair. In the TV series, they had to do that because they weren't going to cast a different character as the Oh, God, how many, how many frickin' Harrys do you need? We've, yeah. got a little, we've got little 12-year-old and, Harry. We can't make a, a 16-year-old and, Harry. And I love... And, I love uh, I love Blackstone, but or Blackthorn, but let's be honest, the man's rugged looking. Mm. He's not gonna pull off twenty. Yeah, barely or, did. Yeah, he barely did. I was I was having the hard <laughs> time accepting that. Going, uh, yeah, you look. You got more of a chiseled jawline for me to buy than you're in your twenties. Yeah. yeah, sorry. But he's perfect for uh, for the uh, the latter Harry, half drunk mm. uh, in, in his thirties Harry. The latter yeah. Harry. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, Which is I, why he transitioned so well into uh, Arrow yeah. and the drunk cop that he is there. Oh, fine. Just so. going to throw that in his face. <laughs> well, the man's right. got a lot of shit to contend with. You know, <laughs> metahumans, earthquake machines, yeah, daughter his daughter's coming back, back from the dead, dying and coming back for the dead. Spoilers! <laughs> yeah. yeah, screw you, Arrow fans. Yeah, if you... Hey, if we want to get right down to it, the purists are going... Who the fuck is Sarah and, 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 and Laurel? Yeah, right. That, that's not Black Canary. 
Yeah, all the purists are over the corner just shitting themselves. <laughs> going, but but any fires? Well, was in the CIA. Never did anything to Auburn. Well, but 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 Slade Wilson at no point in time had a direct interaction with Green Arrow until much later, standing because he had conflicts with the Teen Titans. And this shit <laughs> will go on and on. Yes, yes. Just and Superman smile eyes at him. Blue. Yes, exactly. So it's completely fucked. You're right. <laughs> it's completely fucked. Poor Brandon uh, Ralph. Yeah, the man just doesn't get Hey, 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 Brandon Ralph bounced back just fine from that. I was like, That's oh, true. I can't be Superman. All right, oh, look at that. I'm a billionaire superhero now myself. But yeah. I don't beat people to submission and <laughs> you know, torture them profusely and hang them by their cuticles. I'm just happy-go-lucky and have my mm-hmm. nifty ability to uh, uh, atomically shift. And, and drank too much coffee. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a guy that just <laughs> screams, I've had about five lattes. <laughs> oh, shoot. And they were doubles. But yes, and I'm hammered. Uh, but yeah, as what? we were saying, back to the topic. You're right, after Sorry, after the like first it. five or six, and really, I guess it would be uh, book six or seven is uh, where he he kind of comes out of the, the underdog, closet? and he started to establish himself as he somebody not in. to be messed with. Yeah, he's developing his own mm-hmm. well legend. I mean, was it blood rights or death mask? Which is the one where he essentially kills? The queen of the black court. I think it's. I oh, it's actually it's, red court. Oh, that's and right, red court. It would actually be the. Which fucks with me. It's the all third the one. All the black, black vampire bat looking fuckers. That's the red court. Yeah, I know. Why? Right? Why can't they be the black court? Why well, actually, I kind of like the black court in the sense that we're going old school traditionalist, yeah. not Nosferatu. You know, steaks are the hard, uh, garlic crammed down their now severed head, you know, <laughs> neck hole. It, it, it's kind of old school for that aspect. I love that. So whereas the red quartz, it's all just a fucking illusion. It's yeah. gorgeous as can be. It's dragging you in. It's seduced you due to some weird uh, addictive saliva that just leaves you numb oh, and goofy. Yeah. And then the next thing you know, it just the skin sloughs off, and you see this hideous bat-like creature that gonna... looks not unlike Agrajack's last <laughs> body. I was just going and to say feeds. that. I was just going to say that. The not in this party. Time. This is my revenge body. I kill out the dead body. And if I'm going to get it too. And literally what I thought the first time I, they described it, I was I like, do you, know what that, do you know what this is, Mr. Dresden? <laughs> you multiple me, murderer. <laughs> Gradually got to put it together. That fire flying around that sneak spaceship looks startlingly familiar. Yes, we've oh, got a complete God. laptop right now. Oh, which is the essence of this show. Oh, yes. Welcome to the ramble, folks. Oh, That's it, where it is. It rambles on and on. Yeah. Or for at least an hour. <laughs> but if you're anything like us, you can't help it. You just can't help well, it. Well, he makes plenty of... I mean, Butch, Butcher himself has made plenty of Douglas Adams references throughout the books, too. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, as we talked about... Python. He and, is very much about the uh, pop culture reference. Yeah, all look at all the influences writing. he's had, though. I mean, oh, you, yeah. get, you get a good sense of Raymond Chandler. Yeah. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with Raymond Chandler, well, go to a fucking library. <laughs> I'll help you. The Big Sleep. That help at all? God. You disgust me. <laughs> no, actually, you don't. I'm just having fun with it. Let's, of course, not forget a Rex Stout. Another, oh, yep. Uh, oh, well, yeah. I oh, mean, Nero Wolf's creator. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, you could God. like it. You could liken Bob to Nero Wolf, for that matter. Oh. I mean, he's trapped. So, yeah, I guess that would, make, um, um, that would make Harry Archie Goodwood. He really would. I mean, he's a skirt chaser. Mm-hmm. He He's not... He's not a thinking not a, detective. No. I mean, well, no. I mean, he can even, deduce. It's just it, it takes a bit. Well, no. You even hear him say it in the book series and in the TV series. Mm. He stumbles around until he pisses off the bad guy enough to show himself. Yeah. That's yeah. That is actually kind of common. Detective style. That is actually pretty common. Yeah. He's wisecracking. He pisses people off, mm. and eventually the bad guy comes out and goes, "Really? You fucking said that about my mom?" And he's like, ah, caught you, fucker. So what you're saying is he's <laughs> basically channeling Spidey? A little bit, And yeah. Philip Marlowe. Yeah. Hmm. That's a little bit of Well, problem. yeah, he does. You know, the funny aspect is he does get in the rough and tumble, but he's absolute crap at it. 
if, if it's not involving throwing a, 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 a mana bolt, uh, mm-hmm. the guy can't fist fight for shit. <laughs> he had to rely on a teeny tiny woman to teach him how to fight. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's why I love everyone that makes fun of Murphy. Like, oh, she's a, a five foot nothing. I'm like, yeah, except she's an expert marksman. And, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, an Aikido yeah. expert. Well, let's not forget one of my actual favorite of the Travis and Files no- mm. Files novels is book number four. The um, oh. the summer night, yep, yep. where um, Murphy actually takes on a troll. Damn straight with a fucking chainsaw, with people. A chainsaw, that's right. In a uh, picture that store, I believe it uh, was. Basically, it's a Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So um, I want you to envision How that. this woman is not your favorite heroine. Oh God, right? She makes. Uh, Fuck Buffy. I need Murphy. I was going to say, she makes uh, Angel's uh, detective sidekick that we were just talking about uh, two episodes ago. Oh, uh, uh, in Chris number nine. Carpenter? No, or... no, no. Uh, the detective. Oh, Detective Lockley. That's yes. it. She makes Detective Lockley look like a whiny little bitch. But but she did towards the end. Yeah, that's true. She that was, was a whiny little bitch at yeah. the end. But <laughs> up until that point. <laughs> yeah, she was actually pretty confident and capable of handling yeah. all the big nasty. Or to use a Buffyism, the big bad. No, no, no. That's only reserved for that uh, Spike fella. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, Should we use that. weapons anyway? <laughs> the Spike fella, who of course <laughs> could have been Harry Dresden, if only. You know, and it kind of works. He, but honestly, until I saw Matthew Ryan, mm-hmm. I would have picked him for uh, Constantine. Oh yeah. Right. I'm going. Okay. Here's your character, Spike without fangs. <laughs> oh, and you have a little bit of knowledge about a, li- a lot of things. Oh, yeah. But let's be honest. The guy, the, the guy they cast for no Constantine Matthew Ryan was great. Amazing. I can't even believe that somebody was smart enough to nat- grab. Why did they role. shit can that series? And again, spoiler alert: he gets to make a guest appearance, reprising his character on Arrow. In the most recent episode of Arrow, that's right. Indeed. Facing up against uh, Damian Dark, which they completely rewrote. Thank oh, you, yeah. New Fifty Two. <laughs> here's a new, here's a character. Oh, never mind. Here it is now. <laughs> yes, the New Fifty Two well, bowel movement. The the Marvel Cinematic Universe gets to do it. Why can't DC? Oh yes, that's right. Uh, what are we on to? Uh, Spider Man re re reboot, or is it re 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 reboot? Because I lost track with the countless different cartoon alterations, alliterations, and culture uh, confusion. Don't go too far on that, because that, folks, is actually going to be one of our other episodes in the future. Leave Spidey the fuck alone! <laughs> oh, wait, that, that was my time. Or, as I like to say it better, Spider-Man in TV, successes, and absolute fucking failures. Yeah, that um, one actually works pretty well, too. <laughs> yeah. But, no, yes. Yeah. He's Spidey yeah. alone! No, actually, Summer Night is one of my absolute favorites of all the uh, series, because that one... It is a good series. That one really brought out all the different aspects of the Dresden Files world. You had his fairy godmother mm. making an appearance. Oh, you yes. You had the... Uh, Leah, who was described as putting any Victoria's Secret model, mm-hmm. making them look like dogs. You had... That the, is a terrifying beauty. You had his uh, best friend from the White Court. Mm. Um, you mean his mentor? Uh, I don't know if I would call him his mentor. I mean, uh, we remember in... Uh, 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 McCoy? No, 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 no. Um, I'm trying to remember the book that he first appears in. Gosh. When uh, when his uh, investigative reporter girlfriend goes in as Little Red Riding Hood. Mm. Oh, cover. oh, you're referring to Michael. Yes, yes the Knight of the Cross. And that's not oh, no, a no, joke. No. I'm talking about the White Court Vampire, the one. Oh, that, Thomas. Thomas, Thomas Raid. That's right. Yeah. No, but yeah, no. Michael makes this is actually the first appearance of Thomas too, yeah. and we fight, well, we get to hear more in depth for <laughs> Grave uh, Peril. That's yeah. the one. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I thought that was the third one. Also. Yeah. Grave Peril was the third. Yeah. That's where we first. The fourth meet one's Thomas. the Summer Night. Summer Night is the fourth, and that's the one that brings in all these characters that he's introduced through the first three oh, novels. Yeah. And this is the first one I feel where you get to see the entire cast. Yeah, it's kind of, of a series. wide pantheon. But it, yeah. But again, when we get back to it, and it wasn't like there was a closed cast no. from the series. Uh, what I thought was hilarious is they tried to give her, uh, tried to give Murphy a no nonsense Scully esque uh, character who yeah. just doesn't believe in any aspect of the supernatural quote mm-hmm. hocus pocus bullshit. <laughs> and he's supposed to be basically the equivalency of, of Carmine from the, the second book, who, 
Got eaten by a werewolf. Oh, yeah. About my only complaint but, about the TV series mm. is the casting of Ancient Mind. Well, that happened twice, too, when you yeah. think about it. Because you had that little itty-bitty thing that was just sitting there gorging on spare ribs. So I'm like, oh, is that all going to go to your hips? You're like, oh, you're Ancient Mai. Um, excuse me, I have to stop peeing now. Yeah. Always oh, alluding that Ancient Mai is a far more inaccurate title. Oh, yeah. Uh, what was it? The uh, the latter appearance, but an entirely different actor. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the, oh, which was that episode? It was actually it was the one vampire the one with, with uh, uh, Joan Kelly as Bianca. Was that the one where they oh, were all yes. trapped inside the Joan building? Joan Kelly. So, sorry, I'm having a moment. <laughs> yeah, that's that another aspect the, uh, that you can argue on that, too. Because Bianca Redcourt absolutely despised Harry yeah. Yeah, from the first book and on. Yeah. Meanwhile, it is alluded that they've had more than a tit for tat kind of relationship oh, yeah. in the TV series, portrayed by the very lovely Joan Kelly let's, of uh, let's such shows as let's, Oh, Warehouse Thirteen. Let's say Vivacious. Can oh yeah, say Vivacious. Yeah. That that woman had an hourglass figure and just a, these extreme pouty lips and and dear God, you would have turned your neck over, male, female, gay. <laughs> yeah. You know, Tranny, bisexual, yeah. bicurious, uh, bestial. It doesn't matter. You're going to turn your neck over to her because she just oozed sexuality and sensuality. Also, it looks like she gripped you by the neck and you'd probably like it. <laughs> Let's not, of course, forget some of the uh, other underappreciated actors that were mm. actually in the TV series. There's Kim quite Coates, a few. for example. Yep. Do you remember him as uh, the corrupting demon? Oh, God, yeah, and honestly, everything that Kim Coates great. does, oh, yeah. in my opinion, including uh, the Sons of Anarchy, yeah. uh, everything I've seen him in, he seems to place this cold, manipulative schemester, or he's just this vile, despicable he just fuck! oozes, oozes it's, grease and slime out but of every But he does form. it so How damn does do well! That? I don't know. But no, I was thinking of, actually, Things That Go Bump. That was the second-to-last episode. That's the one of the... Uh, the other ancient my appearance. That was just how much eye candy was in that for oh, the yeah. men. I mean, my God, we have Claudia Black, yeah. Joan Kelly, yeah. uh, 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 Valerie Cruz. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just, just kept getting better and better. Oh, I yeah. felt so sorry for women going, <laughs> man, you really don't have a lot of guys to no, stare at no, unless you've no. got a fetish for a guy in a business suit and a broadsword. <laughs> you're fucked. Well, he was a very pretty man. No, oh, there's he that. He really was. Very well maintained. Yes, well groomed. <laughs> They did so well with his coat. Oh, yeah. But no, another <laughs> reason I actually love number four is because it reminded me of some of the uh, novels and TV shows or movies that it actually led me to Dresden Files mm. and made me fall in love. Yeah, with I, I fell in that same co- uh, standing too. I fell in love with the series, and my mom introduced me to the books, and mm-hmm. then I was hooked from there on in. Oh, yeah. But I mean, do you remember some of the things that. Uh, Actually, I would call influences too, intentionally or unintentionally, mm. to Dresden Files, like um, uh, the author Glenn Cook, uh, famous for the Black Company series. Oh, 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 the yeah, isn't that what they based that movie? Uh, uh to catch a, uh, a deadly spell, uh, or cast yeah. a deadly spell. Cast Excuse a deadly me. spell was a great TV movie made by HBO Pictures. I believe it was HBO Pictures. Yeah, 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 it was. Uh, based off of, I would say, in, in part, hey, uh, H.P. Lovecraft and Glenn Cook series. Oh, yeah. The Garrett P.I. T. Uh, novel series. Yeah, honestly, anything you make Clancy Brown the villain in, I'm, I'm totally stoked <laughs> and down for. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, we ruined everything. Oh, you'll just have to move on now. Surprisingly, a great cast. Uh, you got Fred Ward. You had Julianne Moore. Fred Moore. Clancy Brown, as you mentioned. Fred Moore had really made that role because it was totally believable that he'd be this, quote, schlub <laughs> in a world where magic is being widely used, and he's the only one going, yeah, you know what, I'll, I'll stick with the technical. I, yeah. I got my car, I'm good. I don't need fucking portals to get to and fro. It's just too much to go wrong with it. I got my six-shooter. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, guy's when, carrying his thirty-eight long barrel, and he's happy with that. Of course, his character in the uh, in the movie, Harry Philip Lovecraft. <laughs> the, uh, the name of our detective. Yeah, I, I had a little bit of problem yeah. with that. But again, I don't know if they got the full rights to do it or not. It was really on a shaky ground. And uh, But no, it was one of those things where, uh, going even further back, produced back in, I believe it was, 87? Mm, the first one, yeah. Yeah, I believe Sweet that's Sweet Silver Blues by Glenn Cook. Uh, 
following the uh, career of Garrett P.I. Never even burner, burner. You never even hear his first name. He just goes by Garrett everywhere he goes. Yeah, I kind of like that. Again, once more, just like uh, Dresden Files, a throwback to uh, Rex, Rex Stout, mm. uh, parody of the Wolf. fat man and the, uh, and the, and the skirt chaser. Yeah, the fat man and the Jake, yeah. right. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, there you've got Garrett P.I. Yeah, and skirt chase. Not a, not a quick thinker. Uh, more of a uh, embittered skirt chaser, uh, rough and tumble, and his and his own hero wolf, the dead man, mm. uh, being a uh, spirit trapped in his own body in this house that I, uses Garrett as his hands and feet and eyes. Yeah, I know, because initially when I heard the description of dead man, my brain, of course, goes to, like, right to Simon R. Green's character from the Night Side, dead boy, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you're nothing like it. Oh, okay, well, I'm kind of depressed, <laughs> but, but that's that okay. Point, yeah. That's okay. Folks, if you haven't read anything from Simon R. Green, you happen to love anything involving paranormal mysteries, mm. uh, magic, altered dimensions of that nature, you're missing out a lot. The man has been writing, what, we're up to like seven different series? I believe so, yeah. The Night Side, The Ghost Finders, uh, Death Stalker. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, what else am I saying? Uh, 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 I think that actually covers all the ones I'm versely filled with. Yeah. So far, I haven't been disappointed with a single <laughs> one of these novels. What does that suggest? Either yeah. this guy has a really damn good writing style, or I'm just already you know, used to this guy's psyche at this point. <laughs> No, uh, actually, amazing that you mentioned guest stars. Oh, yeah. We can bring up the first appearance of Bianca mm-hmm. in uh, an episode that's called, uh, it's the fifth one, it's called Bad Blood. Oh, this yeah. This cracked me up. Her little bit of stuff mm-hmm. on the side there is actually Laura Vandervoort from uh, Smallville, who played Supergirl oh, at the time. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I didn't immediately recognize her because that really tiny, slinky dress they gave her. <laughs> just like, Jesus God! It's like, how old is this girl? Uh, Okay, here's my only question. Can I gawk without feeling like an old degenerate? Can I just feel like a degenerate instead? Oh, yeah. Which, if I remember that episode right, didn't she turn out to be a uh, drug-pushing backstabber in the end? Yes, yes, I don't know. I believe so, yeah. But but she has really nice legs. (laughs) No? Okay. Can't we get just one more episode out of her before... uh... Or you take her off and lop her head off, or <laughs> yeah. stake her out to With the fucking broad crows. Sword or long sword, whichever you prefer to call it. The just gonna have this argue with me, aren't we? <laughs> the jury's still out on this. You know, I'd just be grateful Brandon is not here. He would have chastised you to no end. Oh yeah. Uh, as our friend, his um, I would say an amateur uh, weapons aficionado oh, yeah. from both melee, stabbing, mm-hmm. cudgels. The man owns a small arm. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, he could outfit a serious zombie squad. <laughs> Fuck firearms. This man's got the quietest junk to have. Nothing but solid spring steel that would just... Oh, you clean house. Unfortunately, is Michigan rarely where you think to go when the zombie out apocalypse happens? Well, in his region, he's on a, basically an island. So, uh, yeah. Peninsula, but yeah. No, that, that makes sense. There's a lot of fucking water between oh, you. Then you may have to defend from... Yeah, how is water going to stop zombies? They're just going to walk along the bottom. Didn't well, you watch Pirates of the Caribbean? No, but I did watch Land of the Dead. Oh, okay. And it's only until they're appropriated <laughs> by Eugene Clark, i.e. Big Daddy, and goes... <laughs> No. That that shit kicks in. See, I personally would rather be in Florida. If you're going to be protected on a peninsula, at least have ocean. Yeah, yeah, that's you good. Be in a massive hurricane area. Well, that's no, sharks wonderful. are going to take out the zombies that try no, to come through no. the water. Only if you don't <laughs> have to deal with the occasional sharknado. Oh. How did that become a phenomenon deserving two additional sequels still, and one on the fucking way? I'm still saying, where is my zombie sharknado? I mean, we've already established. No, no, no. We, in, need, um, we need something else. What is that horror movie where the the shark eats the zombie and um, becomes a zombie shark? But I don't know if it's entitled Zombie Shark. Is it called Zombie Shark? No, well, they, actually, you're depending on two different aspects. I'm thinking um, of that one scene. Lucio the, Fulci uh, created Zombie. Yeah. Or it's referred to as Zombie Two mm-hmm. because uh, this nice little nod here. <laughs> uh, basically, he took Dawn of the Dead, took all the amusing, you know, dark humor out of it. And that's your whole fucking movie. So take all that amusing little side notes out. And you just literally create a zombie film that is nothing but just dark. But yeah, I just, uh, at any rate, um, yeah, zombie, this zombie ends up biting into the shark's uh, fin. 
I don't know if that actually precipitated it to become a zombie shark, per se, but the funny aspect is there was a film that came out in 2008 called Zombie Shark. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm thinking of the, I'm thinking of the uh, former mentioned movie and how uh, it was implied mm. as the shark started. Well, that's always about. what I presume. Yeah. Like, oh, great. You just already made a vicious <laughs> predator worse. If uh, that's possible. And of course, you know, Discovery Channel will have that movie. Naturally. Yeah. And if not, the busters will be out there. Oh, I'm sorry. They're leaving. Oh. Are they really? Yeah. Well, they've been on the air for how, how many long? seasons? 12? 15? What are, are they going to leave that redhead in charge? God help me. Mm. Yeah, you know, not to sound piggish there, but uh, <laughs> I, I can't say it. Anymore. I can't help it. She's an attractive lady. Oh, yeah. Very attractive. But then I do like the. Oh, 14. Give me a woman with a 14 soul. 14 seasons. Wow. That's pretty impressive. And it's hilarious to see the budget, too. <laughs> you, know, you watch Freya's season. Today we're going to show you how a compass could actually work with a leaf, water, and a paper clip using natural electromagnetic capabilities, too. Season 10. We're going to blow up this fucking tanker <laughs> to show you just how far the shrapnel will go. And would everything in a 50-mile radius be dead? Oh, yeah. Because we also fill it up with liquid nitrogen. And, of course, uh... We're going fucking to, nitroglycerin. We're going to yeah. make a duck bomb. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, I know. I just thought that was absolutely hilarious. How dark that... Just oh, how yeah. larger a scope mm. that got. Once I figured out, all people want to do is see things blow up. Can you blow up some more stuff? Yeah. But, um... No, I, I feel a little guilty here. I kind of hijacked my favorite, uh... Jim Butcher book. But, uh... Honestly, I'm kind of interested in your opinion. Right. Out of all the Dresden Files... Which one did you think was? Um, honestly, I th I think my favorite is probably Dead uh, Dead Rights. Really? Uh, as much as I like Dead, or excuse me, Last Rights. As much as I love Dead Beat, uh, oh, the Halloween Blood one, Rites, the sixth book. Yeah, uh, uh, the seventh should be Dead Beat. Okay, then I am talking the sixth. Okay. Yeah, because uh, personally, I started liking Thomas mm -hmm. from the third book. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I love this. Like, he, he's got this error of uh, uh, arrogance versus aristocrat versus this, oh, yeah. this, just devious sense of humor. At he the same all... time, he's also looking out solely for himself. So it's kind of like, <laughs> let's give a Nietzschean a sense of humor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like we take a, a, a Nietzschean from Andromeda and give him a sense yeah. of humor. And that was pretty much my premise. In fact, again, there was another <laughs> one I went going, okay, you can't get James Marsters to portray uh, Dresden. How come you play Thomas instead? Really? I was actually just thinking James Marsden in his younger days would have been a great Thomas, mm. personally. Yeah, I know. There's just so many different characters. Or, actually, uh, if he was just uh, if he was just blonde, the guy that played the Nietzschean from the Andromeda series. Mm. Which or we referenced. There's quite a few Nietzscheans. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you referring to like Keith Hamilton yeah. Cobb? But isn't he black? Oh, what? Oh, you know what the funny thing <laughs> uh, A little music side note. So, yeah. uh, people, it gets leaked that turns out Keith Hamilton Cobb is gay. Yeah. Can you just hear the ovaries crashing? <laughs> I'm going, yeah, ladies, I'm sorry. He's batting for another team. <laughs> oh, look, there's Kevin Sorbo. Oh, but he's married. <laughs> None of this ass is for you. Oh, poor. But they can dream. Yeah, they can. Actually, though, it's, uh, it's a little funny uh, side note. Uh, we were talking about how James Marsters would have, you know, would have made a great dress. I thought you said James Marsden when Marsden. you goofed up the first time. No, no, James Marsden for Thomas. Mm. James Marsters for uh, for Harry. For Harry, ah. and who narrated all the uh, mm. audiobooks, with the exception of one, a neat little. Uh, oh, ghost story. Yeah, a neat little uh, side. Uh, Side factor, uh, trivia fact, is that I believe it was in Ghost Story, John Glover. Oh, yes, Lionel Luther believe, himself. Yeah. Or narrated. the devil, if you prefer, from Brimstone. He was, because uh, James Marsters uh, was unable to voice. Yeah, that. he was off with his, uh, what, what, like third band now? Yeah. And, and <laughs> He's then, gone through a few of them. And then he returned back to uh, do Cold Days, but there was such an uproar of the fact that James Marsters did not record one of the Dresden series, Damn. that he actually had to come back in and re-record a <sighs> ghost story. Honestly, I don't see anything wrong with it. I so love John Glover's, oh, John Glover's great. Great. It was great. He, he basically tackled the, the exact same concept. He made it his own, 
He had his own spin on everyone's uh, voice and their the portrayal yeah. and how they would be handled. Well, and the man's a great actor in his yeah. own right. Let's not forget, uh, again, much like Dresden Files, a much maligned uh, TV series mm. that it really only got had two great seasons. potential. And that was... Um, Brimstone. Brimstone. Yeah, thank yeah you. it only got two seasons. It yeah. barely two seasons at that. Barely. They want to call it two seasons, but I think it was going to be one of those standard. We're releasing it for twenty-two episodes, mm-hmm. and then the next season, it's going to be even bigger. Oh yeah. So they want to call it two seasons. I'm going yeah. mm, bullshit. <laughs> oh yes, if we make this season eleven episodes. I'm sorry, I don't recall being across the pond. My only problem with uh, with Brimstone was that mm. every time I watched it, all I could think is it's that guy from Thirty. Yeah, it was real hard to look at Peter Horton as the yeah. per- perpetual badass in that, because you're going, mm, yeah. should Which, you be an architect? Long before Spawn was ever going around uh, <laughs> slaying, uh, slaying escapees uh, from hell, just you had best. Brimstone. Yeah, it certainly was better than that fucking movie. Yeah. But no. Although no. I love I love the cartoon. It was an original idea, Spawn. It was an original idea. I oh, absolutely. Yeah. Swear to fucking God. The man's yeah. a writing genius. Oh, yeah. yeah. That Todd McFarlane. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant, man. Brilliant <laughs> in how to market the shit out of that one character. Yeah. I'll one give him one. that. Yeah. He took a cue from Bob Kane, goddammit. <laughs> went, hey, this guy's clearly on to something. Yeah, right? Oh, God. But at least Bob Kane produced more than one, uh, more than one title. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, just a little. All right, so um, um, out of the season, yeah, what was your favorite episode? Do you have like a specific episode that you truly liked? Oh, of the Dresden of the Dresden, TV yeah, of the TV series. Ah, uh, okay, I'm gonna get myself in trouble here. Mm-hmm. I have uh, there's actually two episodes that are my favorite. All right, I suppose we'll allow it. Um, but what do you, the folks at home, think? We're gonna we're not we're gonna knock out the bad episode first, the okay. one that I like for all the wrong reasons. The least, yeah. And uh, that would be, I believe, it was bad blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with yep. all of the You just like the villain. You just like the yeah. villainous. That uh, I'm not gonna dirty lie. Dirty vixen vampire. I am not gonna lie. Dirty boy. One the uh, that episode <laughs> and the uh, flashback scene with Joan Kelly. Ooh. Yeah, well, that was, oh. and bear in mind, this is completely softcore in the sense that we are not seeing a thing aside not from this really, uh, well, very strong looking back. Yeah. That was about it. That's fucking it. She's but nibbling the, on his neck and yeah. just smooching away, and that's but, fucking it. But you know that the woman is absolutely gorgeous. But no, <laughs> then the, uh, my other favorite episode, and it is uh, because, in part because it guest stars Claudia Black. Mm. The other dick. The other dick. Yeah. That is one of my favorites as well. I love The Other Dick, and uh, Hair of the Dog is actually one of my favorites because I love the fact that we actually, right out of the gate, mm-hmm. from the mm, so-so Boone identity, oh, yeah. we get a werewolf story. That was a really good episode, and too. And honestly, it, really it was just, I thought it was well portrayed because of the establishing of the transition of becoming from being human to coming to becoming a primal force of nature. Yeah. It was just a really great take on it, and I'm going, oh, why did this just simply not take off? Well, and you know what? I will say one thing, and I applaud your choice of mm. uh, Hair of the Dog, because much like the premiere episode of, uh, of Dresden Files, mm-hmm. uh, I'm trying to remember the name of that title, uh, Birds of a Feather, mm. uh, Episode 1 and Episode 3 were very much in homages to the books. Yeah, uh, they really were. So, uh, well, so was Stormfront. But. Well, that's what I mean. Birds of a Feather uh, was directly pulled from Stormfront. Mm. Very closely, it was very very closely, closely yeah. adapted to it. And Hair of the Dog, okay, a little looser adaption of the Full, full moon, moon. yeah. But still, still. Yeah, honoring, I'm on your wavelength, sir. Really honoring the person. I still love the, the I, I kind of wish they'd done a little more with that guy that was playing Waldo Butters. Oh, yeah. Poor Matt Gordon. <laughs> and just like, you, what, you can touch it. Everything's been sanitized. Yeah. That was about the, all you really got to do. I felt kind of bad for him. But what, yeah, just, Which, there again, another uh, another great character from the Dresden uh, <laughs> pantheon that I love. Oh, my God. Can, is, is, my, I love it. Is, is, is my boss's car out there? Can we get... <laughs> Which, uh... Love. How can you not love that werewolf pack in the uh, end of... Oh, Billy and the werewolves. Yeah, in the end, <laughs> in the 
sounds like a really bad Archie comic. In the end of episode four, or in the end of episode four, book four, uh, Summer Night, he drops in to play D&D with them. Yeah. <laughs> and plays a barbarian because he's just, you know, he's worked he's his brain too much. <laughs> yeah, he's not like, just give me Thus. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Who doesn't love a werewolf band that on their off hours oh. gets together and plays D&D? I just love that. I love that whole term he used with Billy and the werewolves. Yeah. Like, yeah, it sounds like a child's Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> yeah, really. Or a really bad comic strip. It should go with Terry and the Pirates. You know? <laughs> it was just one of those, I'm like, ah, I'm a little baffled. But, uh, folks, yeah, we are getting about that time where, uh, well, we've rambled on and <laughs> on and on. And even you folks need a little bit of break from us. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Hopefully, we've corrected the sound problem. And hopefully, we've introduced you to a series that you hadn't thought about. Uh, yep. Or if you love it, hopefully, you continue to love it. Uh, some of our insights, and we'd love to actually hear your insights. Yes, and by too. all means. Uh, again, for uh, some of you folks that have uh, left me a few messages, uh, we can be rele- uh, reached at Rotten Reels, or excuse me, uh, rotten rambling on at gmail.com. Yeah, I, I specifically made an account so you guys can leave comments, uh, topic ideas, uh, compliments, complaints, rude death threats, uh, s- uh, sick, morbid love letters for Sean, you know, whatever you feel like. New pictures are welcome. Yep, yep, exactly. Even I, if you're a dude. We're going to get a lot of dick pics. Yeah. You know that. Every time you do that, <laughs> it's just going to be a cacophony of cock, man. All right. But don't post those to our Facebook page. A cornucopia of cock. Cockacopia. <laughs> Interestingly enough, that's one of my voice exercises that I do before we before we record. You blow a guy. Cockacopia. 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 Oh, yeah, Red leather. Yellow leather. Red yellow. Yeah. That's disturbing. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, you can of course reach us on the Facebook there with uh, uh, Rotten uh, Rambling on is also there, and that's you can it. catch it with Rotten Reels reviews. And, of course, to read Rotten Reels Reviews, that is Rotten Reels Reviews at blogspot.com. So, uh, I took the week off because I had a lot on my plate. Yeah, I'm try- I was trying to get a new microphone. Maybe we got this sound problem figured. Maybe not. So, I apologize, but I am coming back with a brand new week, and hopefully you will enjoy it. Uh, everyone seemed to really enjoy the zombie one the, last, uh, the week before last. Oh, yeah. So I got a, I actually got to do a fan one. I'm like, hey, can you do? I got sent Land of the Dead by a fan. I'm Hi. like, that's cool, uh, folks. I am going to set up a PO box that you can suggest movies, uh, maybe uh, different video games we should check out. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, between uh, the Xbox 360, I've got a, mm-hmm. we got a functioning PC. I'm not gonna lie, I have said many times you ought to do a series of reviews on Bethesda games. No, uh, what, what, like something like a Fallout or Skyrim. Fallout. Skyrims, um, that sounded dirty, actually. Skyrims. <laughs> Maybe you should like refer I'm, to as the Elder Scrolls I, Skyrim. I believe that's something you pay extra for on the, uh... Yeah, isn't that that, that uh, uh, what, what, zero-g gravity, uh, ass-reaming? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to... Mm. That's on Virgin Airlines, you to, ironically. You have to pay a little extra for that in Atlantic City from the girls on the, uh... On the on express the elevator. There. Yeah, it's going to be 150 for a Skyrim, buddy. Well, you know, could you be worth show it. me the cash up front. Could be worth it. Yeah, and this is why this is not safe for work. <laughs> or anyway. children. <laughs> yes, give us your children. Bring their children All to right. me. <laughs> but on behalf of Jake and Sean here at uh, Rotten Rambling On, remember, keep your stick on the ice. No, that, that that's right, great. We're going to oh, get sued. Right. <laughs> We're so sued. <laughs> We're non-profit. We oh, wait, wait, wait. They're Canadian. Oh, We're yeah. safe. Yeah. Fuck them. Keep that stick up your ass. <laughs> I mean, take that stick out of your ass. They're always happy and polite. They're going to be like, oh, <laughs> well, we re- Yeah, you yeah. Know, you're kind of mean there, copyrighting our infringement here. Oh. We kind of like you not to use that again. Eh? Oh, if you could stop saying put your stick up your ass, that'd be <laughs> nice too, eh? But if you can't, all right. Then. Well, of course, the, the terrifying <laughs> aspect, they could send someone bigger than Ryan Reynolds over mm. to beat the shit out of us. Like William Shatner? Well, there, yeah, well. I think he might just bore us. Or he I've might seen, just, I you know, might just talk his ear yeah, off about I've tech seen, war. I've seen that man's kung fu skills. Oh, yeah, especially yeah. that jump, that, that scissor kick that he does. <laughs> yeah. Looks like he came off the ropes. And the roll. Don't forget the oh, roll. Oh, yeah, of course. The shoulder roll. roll. Yeah. All right. All right, <laughs> folks, we're done rambling on. Thank you very much, and have a happy. Good night.